increased happiness, increased confidence, increased motivation, willpower, lowered stress. You know, all this stuff can be helpful for some people and can actually happen. However, it can also, what I noticed after a while, it could potentially be What's up guys, Derek from ReplaceMoreIdiots.com. Today we're gonna to be revisiting the NoFap discussion. If you've seen uh, uh, my video on NoFap, you kinda of know my stance on it from a guy's perspective who is enhanced. So if you don't know, I'm on TRT and uh, I did the NoFap experiment. If you wanna see my anecdotal report, you can go look at, I'll put a card up in the corner, doing NoFap on steroids. And it's a bit of a unique spin on the NoFap challenge because most guys doing it are natural. And, um, you know, I just thought I would see how um, it would affect my, you know, brain chemistry, I guess, or how I respond to, uh, you know, everyday stressors and shit and uh, how skyrocketed my libido would go, all that kind of stuff. You can see my results in there. But um, as far as naturals go, obviously, you know, maintaining a steady state concentration of tests with exogenous hormones is a bit different than a guy who is abstaining from busting a nut which is like directly intertwined into his endogenous testosterone production. Like obviously, you know, your HPTA or HBGA, whatever you want to call it, is, um, you know, regulated essentially by gonadotropins going down to your testicles and producing testosterone in your goddamn testicles. So this, if you are busting nuts, is that going to lower your test? If you don't fap, is that going to cause a buildup of tests and a giant spike where you end up getting, uh, you know, way more muscle growth or something? That's kind of what we're gonna be getting into and what the truth is. And I was looking into some of the clinical literature on the subject and I found an interesting article um, that kind of summarized it. And I thought it was a really uh, well put together article that kind of you know did the work for me to be honest. So instead of digging into it, they consolidated the very minimal data available and have a conclusive opinion on what exactly happens. And I'll kind of give you my stance, you know, tying it all together at the end. So here, NoFap is a growing online movement devoted to giving up masturbation, even sex for extended periods, typically around 90 days. Starting off as a spin-off from a 2011 thread on Reddit, the organization NoFap.com describes itself as a community-centered sexual health platform designed to help people overcome porn addiction and compuls compulsive sexual behavior. The claim benefits, however, have now extended the reach of NoFap beyond the realms of porn addiction recovery into mainstream health and lifestyle initiatives. Advocates of NoFap are heralding an array of sexual, physical, and mental improvements, including increased testosterone levels, but is there any evidence to back this up? There's also semen retention that people are doing, and um, like this is basically a chart here of the sexual, physical, and mental purported benefits. What you can basically expect like this, I can definitely attest to the fact that all of this shit is pretty much accurate, with exception of perhaps improved sexual self-regulation. Like I guess because you're not doing it, you're not literally busting nuts on a daily basis, you're self-regulating if that's what that means, but the rest of it is definitely true. Physical um, energy levels, this can paradoxically go up and then down, which we're gonna go into later. A lot of this stuff is a little bit overhyped, but some of the stuff like improved or cured erectile dysfunction, like so many guys who think they have ED on steroids like some of them actually do, and it's, you know, hormonal imbalances, mismanagement of estrogen, et cetera. But a lot of these guys too, they're just so fucking horny and are like porn addicted and have desensitized themselves to pretty much everything sexual related that they can only get like a half chub watching like the most fucked up porn ever. And they do it like multiple times a day. And then they wonder why they have ED, even though they're on a bunch of steroids and they think it's the steroids. And in reality, their libido skyrocketing from the steroids and then they're letting their brains run wild and do fucked up like binges of porn to the point where their dick's essentially like numb and they have to watch like super weird fucked up shit just to feel something. And then they blame it on the gear. And it's like, like I guess hypothetically it comes indirectly from the gear, perhaps from your increased libido, but it's like a lot of this is just willpower too. Like a lot of guys who think they have problems with, you know, like in bed, not, you know, being able to stay hard with a chick. First thing I tell them is, don't fap for a week and don't watch porn for a week and then see how your performance is seven days from now and then tell me if there's no no difference whatsoever and it's highly unlikely that that won't be the that you will encounter the same performance issues like it's highly likely you will notice improvements that's not always the case i'm just saying it's a good like first 
like easy free thing that's non-hormonal not anything you just fucking don't touch your dick and don't watch porn and then see what happens after a week um increased happiness increased confidence increased motivation willpower lowered stress you know all this stuff can be helpful for some people and can actually happen however it can also what i noticed after a while it could potentially be almost counterproductive where your mind is so consumed by sexual thoughts that you're almost better off getting off <laughs> in order to get it out of your head so you can get back to work like that's the annoying thing once you have this shit built up and it doesn't even it's not even just about willpower after a while so you have so much pent up fucking shit that's uh you know it's just like consuming your mind you're like trying to work and you're like you know have a perpetual fucking heart on it's not exactly easy to focus on your work so anyways getting into the actual you know benefits and whatnot in a clinical aspect in terms of does it spike your testosterone um like obviously testosterone does have profound effects on mood and whatnot as far as the actual evidence though two studies mainly pop up as the evidence reinforcing the kind of movement in the first one 10 men had their testosterone levels measured twice baseline before masturbation and orgasm several tests are more reliable than just one and then in 10 minute intervals after this was followed by a three-week period in which they instructed to refrain from any type of sexual activity. After that period, the process was repeated. Testosterone was, re was reported as being higher in the baseline measurements after abstinence. Despite the conclusions of the research, the sample size of the study was tiny, I agree, and the increase in testosterone may have actually been due to the anticipation of sexual arousal in the second experiment after abstinence. What's more, testosterone levels at the first baseline measurement were actually the same before and after abstinence. You know, it's like testosterone levels are so drastically affected by so many things in your lifestyle, sleep hygiene, etc., that it's like very hard to attribute anything to a 10 person study. So I would not take a whole lot from that, to be honest. Um, like you could literally have like one night of shitty sleep and boom, your test levels for the day are, you know not as good as they could be like they could be substantially hindered just by you know a couple days of having like you eat way too close to bedtime and you know you you have a shitty sleep or whatever it is and uh, like whatever it is that interferes with, with your sleep it's way too hot in your room whatever it is and all of a sudden you know your test levels are you know periodically down fucking 10 20 percent or something like this is not it's very very manipulated by a lot of different factors that may otherwise interfere with something with a sample size so minimal. So I would definitely not take a lot from it. Um, second study reported a 45% increase in test levels after seven days of abstinence, but this was a temporary peak, which then returned to the same levels as before, even with continued abstinence and stayed that way. Such transient alterations in test levels are unlikely to have any lasting effects on men's health and may primarily serve as a regulator of creation of new sperm. A few studies on the other end have shown either no effective abstinence on test or that test was actually higher after masturbation or sex. Measuring tests before and directly after masturbation in 34 healthy young men found that test levels increased after self-stimulation, but any longer term effects were not checked. At best, the evidence linking masturbation with changes in test levels is limited and with mixed conclusions. Um, so, you know, again, there's psychological reasons too that could otherwise, like basically here's my stance after, you know, some of the data like it's interesting the you know week long abstinence leading to a spike in test in the real world what do you see it really play out that first week you notice like it's very very difficult to adhere to is it just because it's not a part of a routine for you or like it is part of your routine you're trying to remove it from your routine but it's like a habit so it's very hard to quit is it that your body actually ramps up when it thinks it is you know deprived of sex and it's trying to you know procreate and it's like go fuck people like it's basically what it's trying to get you to do and getting you more aggressive and whatnot you know the actual spike in test levels how much is it going to be and is it going to be sustained you know personally i would not be surprised if there is maybe a transient bump but what we do seem to find at least anecdotally in a lot of these reports are you get a big spike in aggression and you know volatility even in your first week and then after you sort of get used to the nofap after a while things sort of dip down you know, this is at least anecdotally, maybe not for everyone, but from what I've seen in my research, research, you know, anecdotal findings is that after the first, you know, little hill you have to climb, you know, you've reached like a peak of aggression. And then after that, you either, you know, you almost go back down. It's kind of interesting how it works. There's a lot of individuals who will report they get a big fucking spike after a week. And then after a while, it becomes far easier to adhere to not fapping. And then they eventually get to a point where they almost don't even want to. And it makes you wonder, is it like a use it or lose it thing? You know, like there's a lot of things in the body that seem to be regulated by, in fact, like 
you know, stimulating it to a point where it makes you wonder, like, is fapping intermittently perhaps ideal versus like, I think we can all agree that doing it on a daily basis, multiple times a day or something is fucking, you know, terrible. The amount of prolactin spike, the amount of you becoming a lazy bastard that can occur from that and just a fucking psychological aspect definitely a real thing like there's not a it's not a coincidence that you feel so relaxed and so lethargic after like your body has literally accomplished its goal and is now in a mindset like literally neurochemically to just like relax and like do fucking nothing so like doing the opposite of that getting your body into a place where it's urging itself to go do things and be motivated to go after you know procreating i guess is the main you know physiologic goal of it um, I definitely think there's a mechanism there whereby if you do abstain from fapping and especially porn, um, you will get, I don't know if it's going to be a surge in test that is representative in every single individual, but there's definitely a spike in aggression and definitely a real spike in motivation and drive overall which I definitely think can have actual benefits in a entrepreneurial aspect, self-improvement aspect, dating. Like how many guys will, you know, relegate themselves to Pornhub and just like, you know, deal with the fact that it's so easily accessible to bust a nut rather than go put in the work and the actual fucking, you know, getting a chick. Like it's a lot easier to sit on your computer and rub one out than it is to actually, you know, put in the work and find a high quality woman that you want to spend time with, you know? This is the kind of shit that a lot of guys will subject themselves to simply at a laziness and lack of drive. And this gets reinforced further by the constant busting of nuts and desensitizing their brains with porn to a point where they literally have no actual willpower to go fucking find mates, essentially. So, yeah, I think NoFap has benefits in certain individuals. I don't think it's necessarily useful for everyone. I don't necessarily buy that it's going to spike your testosterone levels and subsequently maintain those heightened levels for long periods of time. However, I do think there are psychological benefits that can be redirected, the energy pent up, redirected into things that are more productive and help you reach goals. You know, I don't necessarily think it's for everyone, but I definitely do think there is a psychological aspect that can be manipulated in a way that is beneficial to certain lackadaisical individuals that are otherwise just floating through life with not much meaning and can't really apply themselves to things, I do think they should retain that energy and redirect it into useful applications. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you have any experience with NoFap? Do you have any before and after blood work to reinforce if it does indeed spike test levels or not and if they're subsequently maintained thereafter? Like what I would want to see is a guy who has multiple different baselines of blood work based on, you know, like averages on multiple weeks subsequently after the first one, um, on the same diet model, on the same training regimen, on the same sleep protocol, on the same everything, multiple baselines and get an average of those and then introduce the NoFap and they get multiple averages after that and then sort of compare the averages, you know, and see what's going on there and get a more indicative um, assessment of what's going on rather than, you know, having, uh, you know, like, and this would be your own individual thing, not based on a 10 person sample size, because how are you going to figure out what's applicable for you? If you are referencing, you know, a study that has 10 people in it, obviously this would be something you'd have to replicate on your own. And if they were going to do a study with it, you know, that would be sort of a model I'd like to see, you know, with more, more people, obviously, but I don't necessarily think that's ever going to happen. I don't necessarily think it's a good use of resources. <laughs> Uh, like to basically reinforce something that you could otherwise test for yourself for free if something has a benefit for you. Obviously, the blood work not being free, but the actual testing of the theory being free. And if anything, being profitable because you save money by having more free time to do things. So um, I definitely think it's worth a try for everyone who is curious, but I don't necessarily think it is definitively a advantageous thing for everyone to pursue. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, your experiences, um, anecdotal or, you know, blood work related, anecdotal and blood work related and whatnot. Um, it's all appreciated, helps the algorithm. It's, and I'm sure all the anecdotal feedback is going to be useful to other people trying to, you know, tilt them in one direction or the other and deciding if they want to pursue this thing or not. So thank you guys for watching. Um, like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredace.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredace. Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with. In the video description below, my TRT clinic, all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind. Nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas that design, design myself from scratch, recommended lab tests and diagnostics, including, you know, assessing your endocrine parameters at baseline. This would be something you do 
through my clinic, for example, and if you had a hormonal deficiency, this would be something to um, potentially address through lifestyle, diet, sleep hygiene practices, and then if you know it's unresolvable from there, then you might look at something like hormone intervention, but that would be something you'd do with high quality oversight by qualified doctors, which you'll find through my clinic, that I've vetted myself personally, and anything else I'm associated with, including my recommended diet model, which is indeed tailored to maximizing your testosterone through hitting your micronutrient intake, not just your protein and your calories and shit. It is in the video description description below as well. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.